barrier. It's an unspoken so you barrier. you yourself as an activist? Never. No. The greatest teachers teach without teaching. I don't want to get in, stand at no pool pit and 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 be like, hey, y'all follow me. Just 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 look at the way I live my life and judge me based on that. I know. That's not how the world it goes. It doesn't go the way we want it to go. Yeah. And see you, I choose, I'm going to follow him. You can't stop them from following. It's just that way. Yeah. That's a feel, man. No, it's all love. Yeah, I don't want to be no leader. I never wanted to be no big you leader. You can't. No oh, man, you're, you're already a leader. Yeah, what you no. going to do? What you going to do? Man. No, I'm from a friend. What you going to do? It's, 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 been, it's been adorned on you by God. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Are you going to say God made a mistake? You're yeah, Muslim, no. man. I know you know me. I know you know better. You just talking yeah, Hollywood stuff. But you know. You, you now I'm gonna be honest with you though. That's that's been one of my biggest fears of what? people following me. Like all my life, I, I knew I was chosen. I knew. I used to do shit to to kind of sabotage my path, to sabotage my career. Same thing. I used know? to I used to sabotage my own career. I would get in my own way to keep from having to carry out this great responsibility that God bestowed upon me. It's called, what was it called? Survivor's guilt. You ever heard about that? You heard that, survivor's guilt? No, sir. That um, you feel guilty that you made it and the mother guys with which you didn't make it. They were smarter than you, had more organization than you, but you made it. Right. They had more family than you, more everything, more artillery, more everything than you, but they didn't make it. But it was, but it was set for them to make it. They had everything to make it that you did, but you made it. Right. Did you have that, Mike? Did you did you feel that, that what he what Ken was talking Costa about? Bottle, yeah, well, I felt I knew I was special. I used to always think I was Jim Brown and Jim Kelly from Three the Hallway and shit. Yeah. You know, but I was always in my mind like if somebody picked up me in the street, I'd be scared and run or something. It was always in my mind. And when I had that first fight, when the guy killed my pigeon, it was over. First time it was like I had to fight four every day. I must have three, four fights a day. God, is that is that is that when? Because I just saw your documentary too on CBS. I did a good job. Is that when you is that when you discovered your ability, Mike? Yeah. And so the guys who used to pick on me taught me how to you know hit the guy, knock guys out, and go in their pockets and get their money. So they the guys who used to pick on me after I started fighting back, they became my friends and they showed me the ropes. How to rob houses, how to pick pockets, snatch chains, and all that stuff. Oh, damn, like that. They all became my friends. <laughs> yeah. How did this unfold for you, Kevin, with with the rap career? Obviously, it, it took something devastating for Mike, you know, it, you know, somebody killing this pigeon, you know, for him to discover, you know, the sport of boxing. For you as a kid, man, what what what, what brought you into to the rap game? It was an escape for me. And I'm going to say something. I never said this in no interview, no podcast or anything like that. I grew up real, real violent and real aggressive. Not because I wanted to be, but I was molested when I was a child. So I had this fear of being vulnerable. So I took all, every kind of martial arts you could take. And I even boxed. I did everything. And I wanted to be the toughest person on earth. But writing and making music was always an escape for me. Like I never had the like the nuts to come out and say that. This is my first time saying this today since I've yeah, been. Yeah, but I know I know that I know that route too. Why do you think I became the meanest motherfucker on the planet? Somebody did something to me. Yes, sir. And I didn't want it to happen again, so I became this guy. Yeah. Take it to the furthest extent. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's my, that's my story. That's, that's the but it was deal. really it was really everything that I did, even like people say, like Kevin Gates, he just killed. I'm not. I'm not. But the reason I speak about it now, cause I just released a mixtape like maybe, maybe a few months ago, and guys walk up to me in the gym like bodybuilders and just hug me and cry and be like, man, I went through the same shit you went through. Like, keep doing what you're doing. So I'm like. I guess I'm on the right yeah, path. Yeah, you're, you're really politic out there in the music world, man. I remember when we first heard it, so who's that? That's Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates, I thought you have a fancy rap name, like the King Shabazz or something. <laughs> it's Kevin Gates. Playing old Kevin. It's all good. 
Yeah, so you've you've had a lot, you know, looking up your story, man. You've, uh, you know, you're you're Muslim too, on the uh, yes, alhamdulillah. Yeah, the the voted I, as much as I can. As yeah, much as you can, I guess. I try. You know, for everybody. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Like he's uh, I try. he's in the game, and it's. Uh, so I just want him to say, you know, me. He's in control. You know. So I just, Allah just wants him to know that he follows Allah. Allah just wants to love him. That's all. Allah knows what we do before we were even born. He knew what we were gonna do, what we were gonna do, what we, we did. We be judged by the intentions of our heart and our heart alone. But we try. We do well. We 